we've started arriving early in the week in twos and threes. 54 of the top professional baseball and football players in the country. The place, San Diego International Airport. The time, February. The event, American Airlines $30,000 Astrojet Golf Classic at the magnificent La Costa Country Club in nearby Carlsbad. In many ways, this turned out to be the most exciting and unusual golf tournament ever held in the Golden State. champion Green Bay Packers, the most valuable player in the NFL. Hi, Charlie. Willie, how are you? How many shots does he want you to give him? Listen, man, I'm the one who needs the strokes and not him. Tommy, come on level with us. How do you make this little white thing behave the way you do? What do you want, trade secrets? <laughs> you got to whisper in that little Jesse's ear to make it uh, act up for you. All right, all right. Look, I'll keep my eyes on you guys during the tournament. Yeah, you really keep a real good check on us, Tommy, baby. That morning, more than 100 contenders teed off for the first round. In each foursome was one baseball and one football player, and two amateurs, VIP executives from the nation's top corporations. The competition was partner best ball, using full handicap. These athletes may be top stars in their own field, but on the golf course, they carry the same faults, fears, and handicaps the rest of us do. For example, Sandy Koufax needed not one, not two, but three strokes to get out of that sand trap. To bring back memories. Here's Willie Mays blasting out of one the first time. Well, almost. by shots like this. Paul Krause of the Washington Redskins plays to a handicap of 15. Bill Mazeroski, second baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, plays to a 13. Alex Karras of the Detroit Lions, all 245 pounds of him, goes with an 18. Yogi Berra has a 13, it says here. Mickey doesn't believe it, of course. He carries an 11 himself. Uh, and you need it, too, don't you, Mickey? Uh-huh. Big Nick Petrosavi of the Browns shoots in the low 100. Pearson of the Angels is in the low 70s. Here's Bart Starr about to tee off. 
In addition to being the most valuable player in the NFL, he was also voted most valuable player in the 1967 Super Bowl. Quite a year. He went in with a 14 handicap. Willie Mays has power to spare, but says he never knows where the ball's going. He plays to an 11 handicap. Uh, uh, oops. <laughs> right into the sand trap. For the second round on Saturday, a crowd of more than 6,000 was on hand for the action. Once again, the foursomes consisted of one baseball and one football player and two VIP executives. Clear blue skies prevailed. The temperature remained in the balmy 70s. And Lacosta's 7,200 yards was in superb condition, playing to a par of 72. The kids, of course, were having a field day. After all, where else could they see so many superstars all teed off? up with their golf games. Oh, as was sometimes the case, their golf games were starting to catch up with them. For La Costa, scene of quite a few pro golf classics, is not an easy course by any means. And the ball players, with very few exceptions, found the same terrors that the touring pros found on these tapered fairways, deep gouged bunkers, and marble slick greens. But also, like the pros, many of the celebrity athletes enjoyed these moments of real satisfaction when a shot came off exactly as it was planned. This beauty, put by Mays, gave him par for the 18. Well, so he took a bogey. Bart Starr finished the round in style on this, uh, 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 get over there? Well, like I said, on this very next shot, which we won't show you because Mr. Starr asked us to shut off the camera. Sunday, of course, is the big day. The final 18 hole, and it's a crowd of more than 8,000. For this round, the ball players are paired together in one flight, and the executives are paired in another. Today, the mood is generally more serious. This is it. This is the payoff round. This time, it's for keeps. At stake for the athletes is $23,000 in cash, $10,000 for the winning twosome, $5,000 for the runners-up, $2,000 for the third-place team, and so on. The VIP executive teams will receive trophies and merchandise. Throughout the day, there's an electricity in the air. Huge crowds following the leaders are silent and intense until the shots fall dead. As the tournament headed into the home stretch, the team of Paul Krause and Bill Mazeroski led the field. closest challenge came from the team of George Andre and Ralph Perry, who started the day just three strokes off the pace. But Krause's birdie, here on the last hole, wrapped up the victory with a final net 11 under par 61 for 185, which is 31 under par for 54 holes. calculus to figure out. Congratulations, man. Okay. Okay, you can drive it home. Fine. Okay, fine. Well, well, how'd you guys make out? Oh, 
We should ask you that question, Tom. That's right. You seem to be shooting eagles from where we were looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how it is, boys. I'm just doing a little public relations work. Wow. I need a slide rule to check this out. You youngsters uh, need some expert advice. Come on over to the practice lane. I'll give you some emergency lessons. After a quick shower, the lessons began in earnest. Bart's main problem was one that's all too familiar to many golfers, the slice. Tommy told Bart that in order to hit straight shots, he'd have to take a firmer grip on the club with his left hand. Then the club wouldn't slip in his hand and force him to re-grip on his downswing. When you re-grip, Tommy told him, you cast the club out there like it was a fishing rod. Then you cut across the ball and put a slice spin on it. Keep that grip firm and your slices will disappear. Without question, the firmer grip helped Bart's direction. But then Tommy spotted another flaw. Bart's wrists were not firm enough when his club hit the ball. Tommy showed him how sloppy wrists would cause the club face to turn from right to left in the hitting area. This makes it tough to hit the ball straight, he pointed out. Keep your wrists firm so that the club face keeps looking at the target while it meets the ball. Finally, a little satisfaction. Bart was beginning to hit the ball on target. Willie had a problem that's common among many golfers who played baseball when they were youngsters. He was turning his shoulders on two level a plane as if he was swinging at a waist high baseball pitch. Tommy advised Willie to lower his right shoulder on his downswing with his driver in order to hit a ball better at ground level. Then they tried it with a five iron. Tilt that shoulder down, way down, so it feels like it's going under your chin. Now, watch that shoulder. There it goes. That's better. All right, let's try it again. Shoulder way down. That's it. Well, that problem seems to be corrected. But then Tommy noticed that Willie's backswing was a bit fast and jerky. If you jerk that club back too fast, he told Willie, you lose your grip at the top of your swing. Try taking it back slow and smooth. Ah, uh, much better. The Astrojet Golf Classic was now history. The awards were presented, speeches were made, and American Airlines turned over the proceeds to the San Diego County Council of the Boy Scouts of America for their camp development fund. They were the real winners of this tournament. And so, as the sun sinks slowly into the sand traps, we must say aloha to the stars and to that persistent pro with, uh, well, Let's call it Pizzazz, who promised and provided such splendor in the rough. See you next year.